Hello and welcome back to Hell Mountain. I'm Grandpa Goes Gaming and today we're sending six more controllers up a 100 kilometer technical hill climb. Six devices have already run and one has fallen. Only five will go through to the next round. Today we're going to be sending up three wheels and three controllers. All three of the controllers are pro controllers. We have the Sony DualSense Edge, the Astro C40 and the Thrustmaster eSwap Pro. The wheels we're sending up are the Fanatec CSL Elite, the Sim Raceway SRW1, which is a motion wheel, and the Doyo R270. Good time set in the first video, we're all around 8 minutes for this run. I'm not going to tell you which controller has already fallen, you'll have to just watch that video and find out. As with before, we're sticking with the same car, we're going to be heading up the mountainside in clear weather, in broad daylight, so this should be the, the easiest part of this trial, this, this first round, and I use the term easy very loosely because as you can see in testing there was some uh, there were some very big moments i'll include links in the description to any devices you see that you you might like to try for yourself and also you can find this on the community tabs in dakar desert rally by searching for hell mountain but let's head over to the mountain now see how these six devices got along we're at the start line now with the Fanatec CSL Elite and the Audi Qtron is off. His first section's very gentle, leisurely, go up to speed sort of section. This involves very small movements, a lot of accuracy. Here we've got the Sony DualSense Edge and well, there's a lot of corrections on that just to get it around the corner. And as you can see, all the controllers have made it to that first checkpoint in the same time. That's the Astro C40 up in the corner there, uh, which has just dropped uh, one second under the controllers. There's the Sim Raceway SRW1 by Steel Series, which of course is a motion controller. And that seems to be doing all right at the moment. We're still on the, uh, the flatter part of the track. Each section of road ending in a hairpin. Each hairpin very different. And every controller currently maintaining pretty much the same sort of pace there's the thrustmaster e-swap pro up in the corner currently in pad mode we will get a run as well in wheel mode in a, a later video and uh, you've got to be very careful there not to throw the car over by going too tight well that's the last of our runners the doyo r270 which is one of the cheapest wheels in the competition it's doing all right to keep up at the moment and there's a, a very tight chicane which can lead to misery if you go in there too hot. Uh, let's look, look at the timing then. So the Fanatec CSL Elite, which we're currently watching, is currently the slowest through the first set of hairpins, dropping three seconds to the Sim Raceway SRW1, which is currently dominating. The Doyo R270 doing a good job of keeping up with the other controllers. Just avoid the tree there on the inside and avoid the fence or oh, a bit of a knock on the fence CSL Elite not quite pulling the car around enough oh well never mind let's hope it'll pull back a little bit later there's the first of the shortcuts you can take that if you try yourself and don't try to sit the second one because you will find a tree now then we've got a big drop off on the left there but plenty of runoff tight chicane or oh, you can hook the inside on the right there but unfortunately it didn't work out there for the dual sense edge very very close to the tree on the right there trying to save every millisecond possible as we approach the bridge oh the astro just uh, overcompensating there and that's cost it some time the srw1 starting to pull away from the dual sense edge two seconds behind it the wr270 currently in third place that's doing really well but the first race was all dominated by a controller. This time we've got a motion wheel. So this uh, this challenge throwing up all kinds of variables that I didn't expect. The C40 Pro controller and the CSL Elite both still falling back. But the DualSense Edge, the Doyo wheel and the Thrustmaster pad are keeping up more or less. Are we going to see some times... Uh, that are just way slower than the ones in front. We're going to see a dominant performance. We've got a, a track record which can be beaten. But it's going to be pretty hard to beat because those are some pretty hot runs 
in the first video, well, all but one, if you've, uh, you've seen the video, you know what I'm talking about. And it comes to the first crossover. There we go. This one W1 holds the lead. Fantex CSL Elite pulls the second back, though. Which puts it more or less level with the Astro C40. The Thrustmaster e has just moved up to third place. Moving past the WR270. See what happens now. Yeah, the SRW1 losing time to pretty much everything, really. The Fanatec CSL Elite still lasts. This jump here, you have to get this just right. Or you hit the trees there on the left. So, set up very important going through there. Oh! The, uh, the dual sets edge there, just clipping the wall. No damage by the look of it, or no serious damage. So, that can continue. No problem. There is a rule here that you only have three runs and if one of those runs is under eight minutes, it sticks automatically. Well, the, the SRW1 doing what I didn't expect it to do, and that is to uh, to hold that lead, but the dual sense edge right behind. In fact, the Thrustmaster E-Swap now, identical time to the SRW1, so up at the front, one second splitting the top three devices. Still the WR270 beating the Fanatec CSL Elite. Don't quite know how to think about that. But, uh, or how to feel about that rather. And the, the Thrustmaster here really edging ever closer to the lead of this challenge. Uh, the Astro C40 managed to pull a little bit of time back as well. Leaving the, the two fixed wheels down at the bottom of the order. Here we go for the next checkpoint. And still, the Thrustmaster and the SRW1 posting identical times. Dual Sensor Edge just two seconds back. Two seconds can be won back with a mistake, just like that one there from Fantex CS early. But the WR270 has had an absolutely terrible sector. Finds itself 14 seconds back. Still, the Sim Raceway SRW1, the Thrustmaster eSwap Pro holding the same times through each sector. Now, that's consistency. The DualSense Edge and the Astro C40, though, not far behind those controllers. As we're in this uh, this very tricky section here, that can all change. In fact, the Sim Raceway now pulling a second out on the E-Swap and the Astro just going out a little bit wide. The front wheel sliding into the corner. That's going to hamper its attempts to catch up with everything else. Now the dual sense edge was a second faster in that sector as we head towards the gravel section which is a section of pinpoint control to not hit any small rocks and flip the car the sim raceway SRW1 might have an edge with it being um, a wheel it could be more accurate Thrustmaster ESOP still just one second behind one bad rock one understeer and it's all over for the SRW1 Fanatec CSL Elite was actually the, uh, the device I was expecting to win this, hands down, but it's still floundering four seconds back. Doesn't look like it can make up that time here. It can certainly be fast through the gravel section, but can it be fast enough? I don't think it can. But it's another timing beam, and everything pretty much the same, but the Astro C40 starting to gain ground. There's little micro-corrections you can see in the top right corner there, paying dividends, and good feedback on that uh, that controller as well really lets you know what's underneath you this is the Thrustmaster e-swap we've only got about what 40 seconds left there's one more checkpoint and then it's the sprint to the finish the sim raceway he had a really good run is it going to threaten that uh, that run record here we go on the left here is the finish line it's going to be so close there's the SRW1, the Thrustmaster E-Swap, the Dual Sense Edge, the Astro C40, then the Fanatec CSL Elite, and unfortunately the WR270, which did so well at the start, coming home in last place. So, just to reiterate, the Sim Raceway SRW1 by Steel Series won that, uh, that round with a time of 7.45, which is a new record for this route. Then with a 746 was the Thrustmaster eSwap Pro pad. Behind that with a 747 is the Astro C40 Pro controller, which just edged out the Sony DualSense Edge, which was a 748. 
and then right back to 7.51 for the Fanatec CSL Elite and eight minutes flat for the Doyo R270. We've had a, a pad win its group. We've had a motion controller win its group. What we haven't had yet is a bungee wheel or a force feedback wheel actually win its group. And that seems very strange. The second round though, after all the groups have run, is going to be a more difficult challenge or a different challenge. So is that going to mix things up? Well, coming up in the next group, we have another motion wheel. We have another pro controller head to head. And we have a few older controllers to see if they've still got what it takes. For now though, the R270 is eliminated and the other five controllers all go through to different groups to mix up the racing for round two. Hope you'll join me for the next round of Rule the Mountain when we'll see which devices are going to be joining them, if any device can absolutely smash that record or if it's going to be there to stay and which device simply doesn't have it. For now though, I want to thank you for watching this video. It's been great to have you. Hope you'll consider liking and subscribing so that I'm motivated to make more videos like these. And until we meet again, bye bye for now.